I have a profound, not just love of black people, but interest in black people. I think it's fascinating. I think being black in a white supremacist environment is fascinating, often fun, generally harrowing. I like to say that we have an ethical uh, mandate to sort of mind the catastrophe of who we are and what, how we came into being. A lot of black artists do uplift, but I don't really do uplift. I'm an undertaker. And it, it really is about, you know, a certain attraction to the shadows, attraction to where the bodies are buried, attraction to what things are actually about. So it's really trying to be aligned with the sort of classic superpower of black people, which is this keeping shit real, you know, calling it what it is. Black people can lie like anybody else, but classically, we don't lie to ourselves. I don't think we could have survived the experience of slavery if we were lying to ourselves, you know? So I'm trying to make work less about black people and make work like black people. You know, it's not straightforward, you know? America is the society par excellence of denial. Has there ever been any society that created like manifest destiny and all these kinds of things while it was, you know, genociding the native population. And like, and at the same time, waving the flag around the world internationally for being enlightened, democratic, all these kinds of things. It's like the, the hard disjunctiveness of it is something that black people have lived inside of in a different kind of way, I think, than any other group has experienced, outside of Native Americans, obviously. It's like the canary in the mine shaft, any kind of migrant crisis or disruption of families, we experience it first. And nevertheless, black people are not unequivocally emblems of despair. We are emblems of despair and abjection, but we also emblems of the ability to transcend it. Michael Jordan, Jumpman, you know, we fly, we do all these other kinds of things, you know, at the same time. So I'm fascinated with that kind of dichotomy, or I would say that discrepancy. You know. You know, I had an experience like 40 years ago when I was in school, there was a filmmaker, I can't remember his name, African filmmaker came and showed this film that he did. And I remember getting into this conversation with him afterwards. I was experiencing a kind, consistently a kind of discomfort with me. People were made uncomfortable by me. And I was trying to get a handle on it. And at a certain point, the guy just said, he said, you know where griots come from? You know what a griot is? I was like, yeah, I know what a griot is. Like, you mean like an oral storyteller or historian or whatnot? He said, what's important to understand about that is that griots, when they bury them, even though they are very powerful entities in these traditional African societies, they don't bury them with everybody else. They put them in these hollow trees and let the maggots eat them, he said. Griots will always make people uncomfortable because they're ghouls, essentially. And I started laughing when he said this. He said, so you have to get comfortable with who you are and what you are if you're going to function effectively to do what you were put here to do. Not everybody's called to be a griot. Not everybody's called to be a person who's going to document things that are happening. You know, I remember like when I was a kid, I have a brother who's three years younger than me. We were playing one time. He caught on fire. And I remember very distinctly catching him and staring at it like, okay, I know I need to put my brother out, but this is fascinating. I've never seen anybody on fire. And my brother heard me tell somebody that and just bursted out laughing because he said he could remember being on fire and me holding him and thinking like, my brother is staring at me burn. He's not trying to put me out or he's putting me out, but you know, but like also observing it as he's trying to put me out. And so I always go back to this whole griot thing. It's just like, you know, I, I'm 60 years old now. I'm comfortable with my darkness and I'm comfortable with what it is I'm attracted to. I feel like internally through a series of unforeseen circumstances, developmentally and whatnot, 
I'm built to look at the things that I look at and that I'm interested in, and I don't question it. I just do what I do.